Okay, today we're going to have a quick chat about retaining your users' data on a computer running DeepFreeze Mac. Um, a lot of folks run DeepFreeze Mac in public access environments, shared computing environments, but you can also run it on standalone machines or you know, just any odd machine that you're working on, if you, even if you do want to give your users the ability to save data. What we need to do is just kind of split it so that you have the operating system sitting over here on one side and your data sitting here over on the other. So the first thing we need to do, well, obviously you got to boot the computer so deep freeze is thawed, but we need to get a location so that we can save data to the system. In this case, we're going to be using a second partition on this volume. So what I've done is I've split my hard drive into the data partition and the operating system. So my applications and my programs will all live on the frozen volume with the operating system, protected against change, against damage, against any alterations by the users. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use an inbuilt feature of DeepFreeze Mac to move my users' profiles from the thawed drive over to, the, or from the frozen drive, pardon, over to the thawed drive. Uh, that's done using the user mapping feature of the product. So to do this, I just log into DeepFreeze using the credentials I set up when I installed, like so, and I click on the mapping tab. And what you're going to see here is a list of all of the users on the system except the one I'm logged into. You cannot map the user you're logged into. So if you've only got one user on the system, you're not going to see anything in here. So you do need to create additional users to move um, so that you can, you know, move. A, you can't move the user while you're logged in, long and short of it. So for, let's say I want to move Mr. Wick's account here over to the thawed volume. I can just select whichever volume I want to move him to and then apply that change. Now, if I want to, I can actually go in and do it at a custom level. I can move, say, just the documents, just the desktop, just the pictures, movies, music, or just the, their library for their preferences over on an individual basis if I don't want to open up the whole system for them. In this case, I do want to do that so that he'll be able to save anything he wants on the machine. Now, let's say Mr. Creasy here, he, don't want to give him access to a lot of stuff, but I do still want him to be able to save his documents. So what I can do is I can now go in here and select, I want to move the documents, I want to move his desktop, his pictures and movies as well. Now, I know he's got a thing for music. I don't want him saving a bunch of music on this computer, so I'm not going to move the music folder over. I'm also not going to move his library over because he tends to make a lot of changes to the system and screw things up. So I want him a little more restricted than I do Mr. Wick. So once this is all done, I go through and set this and I can hit apply. And what this is now going to do is once I've authenticated, it's going to copy all the user's data back and forth and get their profile linked up over to the new drive. And you'll see the check marks appearing there indicating that that's been successful. This may take a little longer than you're seeing here. These profiles are, I purposely kept them very small so that we wouldn't be waiting while, you know, 30 gigs of music moved over. So if you've got a large amount of data on the system, expect this to take a little longer than you just saw here. Um, and, you know, it, it could take a lot longer if you've got a lot of data involved. So it's kind of best to do this when the accounts are freshly created so that you're not having to move quite as much stuff around. Now that works great for user profiles. Now let's say though, we've got a particular piece of uh, software or a particular application that doesn't save as part of the user's profile. Well, a similar type of idea would apply here in that what we would do is we would use a symbolic link or a hard link to map that folder from one volume to the next. Um, the general syntax for this is, hear that, um, ln, and then the, um, what we do is once we type in, the ln command is the one that is used to do this. And then there's two types of links that you're going to run into. There'll be either a hard link or a symbolic link. Now, what a hard link does is it allows you to make the same file appear in two locations. Now, it does that by linking to the raw data for that file as opposed to just pointing at another file. Whereas a symbolic link doesn't point at the hard data. What it does is it takes and points kind of like a shortcut from one file or folder to the next. Um, which one you want to use may depend a little bit on the application you're trying to work with and what you're looking to do. Generally speaking though, what you're going to want to do is you're, you're probably going to be okay with soft links in most cases. So that's ln-s. 
And then what we do is you do the path to the original folder, and then you supply the path to the link. And you just want to make sure that your original is now located on the thawed volume and the link that you're pointing to is wherever the application is expecting to live on the normally frozen volume. If you've got questions on any of this stuff, please feel free to reach out to us and let us know. The support team is always happy to field your questions as always. You can get hold of us by email to support at pharonix.com or go to the support portal to uh, support.pharonix.com. Uh, hopefully you found this video, if not entertaining, hopefully at least educational. And uh, I want to thank you for watching. And again, any questions, just feel free to reach out and let us know.